So I recently uploaded a video showcasing how to create TUIs, terminal user interfaces, and that video seems to have gotten a good reaction, so I thought why not make another one. But this time we'll be covering a bit more advanced dialog boxes, ones that may not be as obvious on how to use, such as progress bars, text editors, and file explorers. So let's get started, shall we? Alright, so the first thing I want to show you here is the progress bar dialog. Now I don't really know how your script looks like, or how you want to use this uh, dialog box, but I will show you a few different examples, and then you can pick and choose what implementation you like best. So to get started, we're going to use the dialog tool to call a dialog box called gauge. And then we can go ahead and give this a description. So I can name this progress. And then might as well give it a title. Let's say installing. And then you're going to need to define the size. And that's usually going to be 0,0. zero. So it will auto scale, but in this case it doesn't work very well. I'm gonna show you. It's, it will still work and we'll get a dialog box with a progress bar, but it's quite small and it just doesn't look right. So I'm gonna go back and change this. So let's say 770. And now it looks much more nicer. Now the first thing you might be wondering is how do we add progress to this progress bar? To do that, we're gonna need to pipe in the value number that we want the progress to show. So I'll bring up this command again. And instead of calling directly, I'll run echo to pipe in the value 25 to this dialog command. Now, if I run this, nothing will happen immediately. And that's because this is really designed for a continuous value. Let's say that you have a script that is giving continuous value to this dialog box. So then it will be constantly updating. But one way we can display this on a terminal is I can add a sleep command right after. So if I put in a sleep, let's say two, and run this, now we'll get a progress bar of 25% for two seconds. Now this dialog box is really only designed to be run from a script. When you try to run it from a terminal, it just doesn't make sense and you might not get an idea on how to use it. So I'll be showing you a few different scripts that use this uh, progress bar dialog and then hopefully it will give you a good idea on how you can implement this on your own. I have a few simple examples right here. Let's start with the first one. Basically, this is just a for loop. It counts from zero to 100 on a five digit interval and then it sleeps for 0.2 seconds and then it echoes the number. But when it echoes the number, this number will get piped into the dialog command and then it will keep updating each time it outputs the number. So let me show you. So if I run this, we'll get a dialog box with the progress updating each 0.2 seconds. So this can be very useful if you have a value that's constantly changing and you want to show the progress of the value. So that is super nice and simple. Now I want to show you the second progress script. Basically the way this works is I run a wget command to get an ISO, and then I clean up the output a little bit so it only displays the percentage of the download. And then I pipe that value to the dialog command, so then I'll have a nice TUI user interface that displays the download progress. So now if I run this, it will start downloading an ISO, and then it will display the progress, nice and clean. And just to show you on how I clean this up, so if I go ahead and uh, comment these lines out, and run this, what it's gonna do now, it will start downloading the ISO, but it will not pipe it into the dialog command. So if I run this, it will just show me the number value of the percentage. Now, one thing you gotta keep in mind here, that the more this number value updates, the slower it will get. Let's say that you have a script and it's outputting constantly the number updates, then it will make the script slower if you pipe this value to the dialog command. One way I can show you this is if I go back to this script and delete this, then run the script again. Now it will update way more constantly. It's still the same down speed, but it's just refreshing way more faster. The issue with this is if I pipe these values back to the dialog command, we will still be able to download, but it will be way slower because for each time we are updating this value, we'll need to update dialog and then the download will have to wait on the dialog command to update. So you're gonna have to choose on how you optimize running that dialog command. I think in most scripts, it's not gonna be that big of a deal, but if you're taking a value from other command, like wget in this example, then you're gonna have to reduce how often it pipes in the dialog command. Otherwise, the dialog command might be bottlenecking your progress that you're trying to monitor. Or if you wanna be super cheeky about it, what you could do is you could use multi-threading. You could run the wget command in a different thread, and then you could take the value from the wget command and then use a different thread to pipe this value back to the dialog command. So then the progress won't be bottlenecked by the dialog command. So the last progress script I wanna show you is this one. And what this basically does, it lists the files from a directory and then it takes all these files and then sends them to a different remote server. And for each time a file is sent, then it updates the progress. So let me walk you through that. So I have all the files I wanna send in this directory. 
and then it puts these files into a list and then it gets the number amount of these files how many files are there so it basically takes this list echoes it into word count and then it counts how many words there is and then we use a for loop so for each file in the file list we'll add one to the count and then we'll use scp to send this file to this demo server after that what we will do is we will use the small equation to determine what's our percentage at so we will take our current count multiply by 100 and then divide by the total amount then we echo this value to the dialog box so if i run script 3 it will start sending files and then it will update each time a file is sent and if i go to the files directory and let's say that i will create a new file so now we have 11 files instead of 10 and run this again it will update accordingly now this is just a super stupid simple example if you want to run something like this actually in your own script then you might want to modify this a little bit and maybe catch in some errors from here and adjust accordingly so that is pretty much it for the progress bar dialog but there's a few more interesting things i want to show you so i want to show you the f select dialog what this basically does is prompt the user with the dialog box and with the file explorer then they can select a file path and then you basically take this file path back to the script and run whatever you want to do with it this can be very useful if you have a script that installs something and you want to choose where you want to install it so let's try to run this so usually you use the double quotes to specify the description but for this dialog box we're going to use it to specify the path so i'm going to start from the root directory so i'm going to put forward slash and then the size i'm going to give it zero zero now if i run this we'll get a nice little tui with a file explorer and then you can go in here and choose the path and then you can stop there or we can also choose files if you want to so i can choose this zsh file and if i press an enter then nothing happens and the way to get this value out just as i explained in the last video is we take this whole command we put it in a variable and we use this ugly syntax now we can run this and give it a path then we can extract this variable but to be honest with you, I don't find this box to be very intuitive to use. Usually what I do, instead of going there and uh, choosing the path using this GUI, what I like to do is I just go in here and type in the exact file that I want. So sadly, it's not as convenient as I would like it to be. But I guess you can still get a nice little visual for the directory structure. So now I want to show you just a simple way on how you can combine these scripts. So I have a simple script here that I can run which then it's gonna prompt me uh, to select an ISO to download. So I'm gonna go with the first one. And then it asks me, where do I want to download it? So I'm gonna give it the path to this user's home directory. And I'm gonna name this arch.aso. Now, whether this file exists or it doesn't exist, it doesn't really matter that much for this dialog box. It will still output the path anyways. So we can use this dialog box to uh, create a new file or choose an existing file or choose a directory. So in this case, I'm choosing a file that doesn't exist and that's completely fine. Now for pressing OK, now what this will do, it will start downloading it and will show me the progress using the progress dialog. And once this is done, it will show me a message box saying, hey, the, the download has been completed. So now I'm going to exit out of that. And if I unless in here, now we have the ArchISO fully downloaded. And this script is also super simple. Let me show you how it works underneath. Basically, we run the menu dialog and we prompt the user with multiple choices. Once the user makes a choice, it gets put into this variable. Then we run another dialog box with the F select option then the user gets to choose a path once that is done it will clear the screen and then it will run a case statement then it will run the wget command to download the iso and then puts the output of that command into the gauge dialog box and depending on which iso the user chose it will run the download url for that iso accordingly and once everything is done if the exit error is equal to zero then it will say, hey, the download has completed. Otherwise, then the download has not completed and it will say that the download has failed. Now, the last dialog box I wanna show you here today is the edit box. So in double quotes, we're gonna to need to give it the file that we want to edit. And you need to make sure that the file exists. So if I just type in test and give it the size, then run this, it will say not a file. But if I touch to create this file, now run this command then it will prompt me with the, an empty edit box. And then you can go in there and type in anything like hello world, testing this edit box. And if I go ahead and save, then cut out this file, then you will see that the file is still empty. And that's because as always, it doesn't really output to the file. You're gonna need to take the output from this command and then 
put it into the file after the fact. So there's a couple of ways you can get the output out into the file. The first one, we can run this command and then we can pipe standard error under the file. Now you might be asking, why are we redirecting standard error under the file? And that's because standard out outputs to the terminal and that's your basically TUI. So if we redirect that under the file, then you won't get anything because that output is being redirected to the file. So instead they chose to use standard error to output to the file. So now if I run this and I can type in anything, so I'm gonna type in hello world again, uh, line two, line three, just to show you, then save and exit, click okay, and cut the test file. Now we have our beautiful text in there. Now this is not very convenient to use as if you're gonna try to use it again, then what it's gonna do is gonna wipe this file completely and then start over. So the preferred way to do it, just like using any other dialog command, is that we take this whole thing and we put it into the variable, just like that. Now I can edit this file, save it, and our edit is in this variable, and then we can redirect this variable back to the file. Using this dialog edit box, I made a really silly script that prompts the user to select a file. So I'm gonna say new file, then I press in OK, then it will give me this edit box, and I type in anything, anything in this file, and I can save it and then cut out this new file. And here you go. So here's a super simple example on how to use that edit box. But most of the time I don't really find all that useful because you rarely ever need to get the user to edit a whole file in a TUI environment. But you know, it's there if you ever need to use it. So that's mostly it for this video. There's many other dialog boxes which I have not covered. And that's because they are either super simple to use or they are not used all that often. Like take the calendar dialog, for example. Like, yeah, you can use the dialog tool to give a calendar to the user, but you will rarely ever need to use this. And if you ever need to use it, then all you gotta do is just put the thing in a variable. Then a user can give you a date and then you can get the exact date. So that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to show you today. Hopefully you found this content useful to you. And hey, if you decided to stick around and subscribe, then I really appreciate that. But for now, I'm gonna peace out and I hope that you have a wonderful day. See ya.